Welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Introduction to Paninian Grammar. We have been studying for some time now the process of speech production. This is an extremely important part of the course and that is why we have studied it in some detail, some aspects we have studied in some detail. It can be studied further in some more detail, but that we will reserve for the advanced course. Right now, we have seen the process of speech production and the internal process and then we also saw the external or the physical or the biological process which leads to the actual production of the speech symbols which are also audible. Now, in this lecture, we shall look at the features of sounds which we also we have studied earlier, but right now we will take individual sounds and note down their features. As far as the information that we have gathered in the previous lecture, notably the place of articulation, the effort of articulation, the length and also the accent. So, let us look at individual sounds and see what features they have. We will also see what is the purpose of recording down these features. Now, we will also base ourselves upon the traditional sound inventory that we have seen. To recap, we have studied this source Paniniya Shiksha and the verses Atma Buddhya Sametyarthan Muno Yungte Vivakshaya Manah Kayagni Mahanti Saprera Yati Marutam Marutas Tu Rasicharan Mandram Janayati Swaram Sodirno Murdhya Vihato Vaktramapadhi Marutah Paranan Janayate. We also noted down these eight stages of speech production and all of them we have studied so far. Atma Buddhya Sametyarthan being the first stage. Mano Yungte Vivakshaya being the second and it is these two which are cognitive in nature and then starts the physical production of the speech. Manah Kaya Mahanti the third, Saprerayati Marutam the fourth, Marutas Tu Rasicharan Mandram Janayati Swaram the fifth, Sodirno Murdhya Bhiyato the sixth, Vaktramapadya Marutaha the seventh, Varanan Janayate the eighth one. These are the stages of speech production mentioned in the Paninia Shiksha that we have studied. Now, we also noted down in the earlier lecture that these sounds that are produced in this process can be classified into two straight groups based on the length that is required to produce them. The first group can be called the group of vowels and the second one the consonants. We also noted that the vowels require minimum one matra. Matra is the measurement to measure the time span required to produce a particular sound. Now, the vowels require minimum one matra and they can be also pronounced using two and three matras. And the consonants, they require only half a matra. That is the basic difference between the consonants and vowels and therefore these two groups can straight away be made. And now we will study these two groups and the members of these two groups, the sounds that are classified under vowels and under consonants individually and see what features they have. First let us study the vowels. The important point to note here is that it is about all the sounds but also about vowels that these are individual sounds which do not convey any meaning by themselves per se, generally. Generally this does not happen. A, U, etc., R, individually they do not convey any meaning. 
but they are definitely part of a group of sounds which conveys meaning. It is only these sounds which are used in Sanskrit to convey meaning. A Sanskrit speaker can pronounce much more amount of sounds, no doubt about it, but it is only these sounds which are used to convey some meaning. It is only these sounds which are meaning bearing speech units used for communication in the social arena of course. And it is proven by contrastive measures and we shall study this aspect as well in the advanced level course, how this is studied and how the Sanskrit grammarians studied this contrastive aspect. Another important point to note here is that in this lecture we are going to present only the description used in the Paninian grammar. This is what we did also in the last lecture. We do not compare it with the description done by modern scholars. The modern scholar had, scholars had much more advanced technology with them to study and compare different sounds and their features. So they have come up with much more advanced system. And we can study this aspect in an advanced level, sco level course on the Paninian grammar later on. However, we confine ourselves to the information that we get from the Paninian sources because and it is important to do this because it is on the basis of these sources that the grammatical system is constructed. The method of substitution that is employed in the Paninian grammar goes deeper up to the sounds and substitutes the sounds. And for that it uses these features as an important criterion and that is the reason why it is important for us to study these features. We shall compare with them and present the diagrammatical representation etc. later on. So let us now look at each vowel. So let us look at vowel a. Vowel a has 18 varieties, there are 18 sounds and they are shown in the second bullet how the number 18 is arrived at. So there are three varieties as far as the length of the vowel is concerned, rasva short vowel, dirgha long vowel and pluta prolated, rasva one matra, dirgha two matras and pluta takes three matras multiplied by the accent, the pitch or tone, udatta, anudatta and svarita, multiplied by the nasalized version namely anunasika and niranunasika. And so you have 3 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 2, 18 varieties of a in Sanskrit. So there are 6 varieties of rasva length a, 6 varieties of dirgha length also pronounced as a and 6 varieties of pluta which are a. The sthana, the place of articulation using which this a is pronounced is called kantha or vilam. The abhyantara prayatna is vivruta and there is also samvruta prayatna but we will talk about it now. So this 6 rasva varieties have samruta as abhyantara prayatna, whereas the 12 varieties namely so 6 dirgha and 6 pluta, they have vivruta as abhyantara prayatna. There is an important point to note here that the entire rule base of the Ashtadhyayi, the Paninian grammar is trained in such a way that it does not know this difference. It treats them as non-different, that means the 6 varieties of rasva rasva a, they are also trained to have vivruta as its abhyantara prayatna and not samruta. Only the last sutra in the Ashtadhyayi 8468 states this difference namely that rasva a 
has samruta abhyantara prayatna, which is not known to the rest of the text as per a 8.2.1. This is a very clever design, clever device on the part of Panini to do in his own grammar for various purposes which we shall see later on. This is an extremely important thing to remember about a. Uh. Let us go to e now. e also like a uh, has 18 varieties. 3 of the length, rasva dirgha plata, rasva short, dirgha long and plata prolated, multiplied by accents, udatta, anudatta and svarita, multiplied by anunasika and niranunasika. So, 3 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 2 that is 18. There are 6 varieties of rasva, rasva e, e, 6 of dirgha e and 6 of plata e. The place of articulation or sthana for all these 18 varieties is talu or palate and the abhyantara prayatna for all these 18 varieties is vivrita. Then let us go to U. Similarly, U also has 18 varieties, 3 related to the length, rasva, dirgha, pulita, multiplied by the accents, udatta, anudatta, svarita, multiplied by the nasalized version, anunasika and niranunasika. So, 3 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 2 once again are 18. There are 6 varieties of rasva, rasva u, u, 6 varieties of dirgha u called u and 6 varieties of plata u, u. The place of articulation used for the pronunciation of this sound is lips, oshthau. The abhyantara prayatna for u is vivruta. Then we go to ru. Once again, this sound also has 18 varieties. 3 related to the length, rasva, dirgha and plata, multiplied by 3 accents, udatta, anudatta and svarita, multiplied by 2 nasalized and unnasalized versions, 3 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 2, 18 varieties. There are 6 varieties of rasva, ru, 6 varieties of dirgha, ru, and six varieties of plata. The place of articulation for this sound is murdhan or roof of the oral cavity. The abhyantara prayatna is obviously vivruta. There is something more that we need to know about ru. Nowadays, the pronunciation corresponding to this written symbol is not made as per the description made in the texts categorically. There are regional variations that are found. So, for example, this sound is pronounced in some region as re and also transliterated by writing ri, whereas in some other region, the same sound is pronounced as ru and also transliterated as ru. The original Sanskrit pronunciation is lost. However, there is description using which this can be reconstructed, but that we shall study later on. Let us now take a look at Lu. Unlike the sounds that we have seen so far, the vowels, this is peculiar because it has only 12 varieties. As far as the length is concerned, there is no dirgha length available. Only rasva and plata are available multiplied by udatta, anudatta, svarita, multiplied by anunasika and niranunasika varieties and we get the 12 varieties. There are 6 rasva, lu and 6 plata, lu. The place of articulation of this sound is danta, tooth or teeth and the abhyantara prayatna, the internal effort of articulation is vivruta. There is something to note about this also. This is a very peculiar vowel. It does not have a long variety. Its pronunciation is lost from the time of the Vyakarana Mahabhasya of Patanjali 
150 BCE. But the tradition of Paninian grammar has still retained this vowel. Only a handful of words in Sanskrit have retained this vowel in the written form and obviously the pronunciation is influenced once again by the regional, regional pronunciation. So this is pronounced as li in some regions and lu in some other regions. Also transliterated as li in some regions and lu in some other regions. Then we go to a. This also has 12 varieties, not 18. And in this case now, the rasva variety is absent. There are only dirga and pluta varieties as far as the length is concerned, plus the 3 multiplied by the 3 accent varieties multiplied by the nasalized varieties. So 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 2, there are 12 varieties of this. So there are 6 dirga a and 6 pluta a. The place of articulation in this case is twofold, kanthatalu, velam as well as palate and the abhyantara prayatna is vivrata. The next sound vowel is ai. This again has 12 varieties, dirga and pluta in terms of length and then udatta, anudatta, swarita as far as accent is concerned. Anunasika and Niranunasika as far as nasalized version is concerned. So you have 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 2 that is the 12, 12 varieties. There are 6 Dirga varieties ai and 6 Plita varieties ai. The place of articulation for this sound is once again Kanthatalu, Vilm and Palette. Both both together. And the Abhyantara Prayatna for I is Vivrita. Next we go to O. This also has 12 varieties. In terms of length, only Dirga and Pluta. Rasva is absent. Accent is threefold. Udatta, Anudatta and Svarita multiplied by Anunasika and Niranunasika, the nasalized variety. That means 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 2 and we have 12 varieties of O in Sanskrit. There are 6 Dirga varieties O and 6 Pluta O. The place of articulation for this sound is once again Kantha and Oshthau, the velum as well as the lips and the Abhyantara Prayatna is Vivruta. Next we go to au. Au has got 12 varieties again. Once again the rasva variety is absent, only dirga and plutta varieties multiplied by udatta, anudatta and svarita multiplied by anunasika and niradunasika. So 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 2 and we have 12 varieties of au. 6 varieties of dirga, au and 6 varieties of plutta. Au, the place of articulation is thana, which is kantha and oshthau as is the case with o, the vilam as well as the lips. The abhyantara prayatna for au is vivrita. This is how individual vowels can be described. To summarize, according to this description, there are in all 132 vowel varieties in Sanskrit. Only 9 are mentioned in the initial enunciation which we also studied in the course of this lecture. So these 9 are mentioned in the Pratyahara Sutra. So what is the correlation between these 9 and the actual 132 vowels? So a, e, u and ru, they all have 18 varieties and therefore 72 and the remaining 5 lu, a, i, o and o they have 12 varieties each. Lu does not have the long variety 
and the remaining 4 A, I, O and O they do not have a short variety. So, each of them has 5, each of them has 12 varieties and therefore 60. So, 72 plus 60, 132 vowels. What is the correlation between the 9 that are actually mentioned in the Pratyahara Sutra and the 132 that can be arrived at by the description provided in the Paninian grammatical tradition as we studied here in this lecture? What is the correlation? Are these 9 representatives of these 132? This obviously we shall study at the end of this treatment of this topic. So, the concept of Savarana will be introduced which will also deal with this topic and address this question. The concept of Savarana will clarify that these 9 sounds do represent these 132. All the 18 sounds as far as a, e, u and ru are concerned can be called savarana of each other and all the 12 varieties of each of the remaining 5 vowels lu, a, i, o and o can also be called savarana of each other also to be translated as homogeneous with each other. Why? On what basis? This we shall study little later. Now, amongst these, if we have to specify only 6 varieties related to a particular length, what do we do? What is the device? Is there a way in Paninian grammar where only 6 varieties can be referred to? Yes. We shall study this also when we clarify the concept of Savarana. The next important point is what is the function of these features? The features that we have studied with respect to individual sounds. What is the function? The function is that these features act as parameters. In selecting a particular substitute from amongst many if the case arises, in place of a particular substituent having certain kinds of features which is directed by, which is stated by the meta rule sthane antaratamaha 1150. We shall study this also when we look at this process in a nutshell later on. Now, before closing, let us study the Mangala Charana as is our practice. This Mangala Charana is taken from a celebrated text called Vayakarana Bhushana Sara written by a scholar called Kaunda Bhatta. The Mangala Charana is Shri Lakshmi Ramanam Naomi Gauri Ramana Rupinam Spota Rupam Yatas Sarvam Jagadetat Vivartate. I repeat. Shri Lakshmi Ramanam Naomi Gauri Ramana Rupinam Spota Rupam Yatas Sarvam Jagadetad Vivartate. And let us end today's lecture with the five sutras taken from 4 3. They are Yushma Dasmado Ranyatarasyam Khaicha Tasmin Nanicha Yushma Kasmakau Tavaka Mamaka Vekavachane Ardhad Dhyatu Paravara Dhamotama Purvacha. I repeat. Yashma dasmado ranya tarasyam khaincha tasmin nanicha yashma kasmakau tavaka mamaka vekavachane ardhadhyatu para varadhamottama purvacha. Now we shall study the remaining sounds in the next lecture and study the features that they have. Thank you for your attention.